Hi, I'm Steve Green. Um, in this video, we're going to be creating a custom workflow assembly that we will call from within a workflow. Um, the workflow is going to be triggered on the create of an account and it will create a task for the, um, the manager of the who created the record to, to check the account, um, obviously to verify that it's been created correctly by their subordinate. So we'll start by looking at this existing project um, which is created with the developer toolkit. It has a workflow project within it which I've already strongly signed so that it can be deployed to the platform. So we'll now right click on the project, add new item. It's going to be a class library and then we need to give it a, a descriptive name so create task for manager check account. So this is the empty class library which has got nothing that's specific to CRM at this point. Um, the developer toolkit has already added references to the um, CRM SDK assemblies but obviously we need to add a using statement to reference them and to get IntelliSense. So Microsoft SRM.SDK and Microsoft.XRM.SDK.Workflow Also the class has to, the access modifier has to be set as public otherwise it will fail to deploy and it must inherit from the code activity class. Um, obviously if you right click it and you don't have this resolved to system.activities you'll need to add a reference to system.activities oh, that's the wrong project within the workflow references so you need system.activities then we need to override the uh, standard execute method I've got this on the clipboard at present so if I paste that in so that's the uh, uh, statement to override the execute method and I've started it with a try block which obviously will then catch any exceptions so I also need to paste in the catch block which is also on my clipboard and in one of the exception types is this system.web.services soap exception so you need to ensure if that doesn't if you if you use that same exception that is that you have system.web.services referenced and then if I close the closing brace of the execute method just save that so that's our very basic um, starting point for the custom workflow. I've instantiated the tracing service which I use just to output diagnostic information so I know where the if it was to fail and I was to do diagnostic logging or to retrieve an error log from the platform I could see what steps it had reached before or tried to, to, to assist with pinpointing where the issue had occurred. So now what I also need to do is obviously this is going to be triggered um, on the create of an account. We need to access properties and fields um, of that account. So I've just pasted in a, a small snippet of code. So I'm creating a late bound entity type and defining it as null. I'm then checking in the context input parameters if it's not null and then if it's not null if it contains an input parameter called target and if, if that type is of entity I then cast that input parameter target to this late band entity type if that's not present I'm doing a platform service.retrieve method of the primary entity name of the context so it'll be triggered on the account so that would be the account entity name the GUID that was called that was passed in the context and then uh, which column, which fields I wish to retrieve, obviously if I do a column set true it retrieves all. The reason that's not seen in the IntelliSense is I need the Microsoft XRM.SDK.Query 
using statement. So if I right click resolve, that's now added that query statement. So now I should have um, a late bound entity which contains all fields for the account that triggered the um, the workflow. So I now need to extract the owner information to then do a query to look up the manager. But what I'll do is I've previously generated an early bound type class for my organization which I can add to this workflow by right clicking add existing item browse to where it was output which is my SDK bin folder and I have this CRM demo early band and I've added WF for workflow to the to identify it and within that when I generated it as you can see on my previous videos I've added the only difference between that and the plugin one is the namespace so I've used the CRM demo dot workflow namespace instead of the plugin namespace so now I should be able to cast that late band entity to an early band type I'll just call it created so I'll use the two entity generic method to cast that to an account type so now I have an early bound created account object that I can access the owner information by a strongly typed property so now if I look at created account dot owner ID I could get an entity reference to do a query for the manager so what we're going to do now is create a link query to retrieve the manager information so var manager equals oh before I do that sorry if I do I've previously mentioned a service context name which allows me to access the organization service context for this organization so if I instantiate that so CRM demo context because new CRM org con I need to pass it the organization service the reason I put it within a using is that I want it to dispose of it immediately when it falls out of scope of this using statement so now that's instantiated I can do my query so from users in the organization service context system user set and criteria where the users dot id equals the created account owner id so that should find the owner of the record that was created and then I can select users but what I'll need to do is retrieve just the first value because it should find a single record but obviously this is a query iQueryable collection so I need to do a first so that will return a single system user record which will be stored in that manager var which I can then output to the to a parameter so I need to now define my output parameters so within my class I can create a region call it workflow parameters so within there I need to define an output and here I can, because I've got the early bound type so we'll just call it 
this is the manager is the name of the output and then the reference target because it's a entity reference we can now use the early bound class for the system user dot entity logical name and then we need to create a public property which is an out argument using the generic type and we can say that it's an entity reference we're passing out give it a name so um, user user manager and then a get set so now that's defined that output workflow parameter and with the manager we've retrieved from this link query we can set that user manager set pass it the execution context that was part of the execute method and then the the value is manager and we need to pass it as an entity reference we can use the entity reference method so that should complete our custom workflow assembly that we can call from within a uh, standard workflow and what we need to do now is add that to our register file so that it gets deployed to the platform so to do that we open the register file in this solution assembly we need to remove that last slash put the closing part of the node we need a work flow types and where the solution for the assembly is obviously I've took the slash off the end of it off there and created the closing node then within there we, I've just got on the clipboard we need to add a workflow types um, element and, and closing node and then a workflow type give it a friendly name so I've just called it return manager name return manager uh, don't need to bother with the description a grouping where you want to see it from within when you call it under the workflow uh, you can group them together under a single area so you can then pop out and see all the class libraries a blank GUID which is 8, 4, 4, 4 and 12 zeros and then the type name if we save that and deploy it that might take a second so I'll just put it on I got an error because I hadn't added the system runtime dot serialization. So if we deploy it again, okay. So now that that's finished registration, we can see that it's put a GUID to replace the empty GUID. So now, if we look at our CRM, go to the solution and look at the plugin assemblies we can see our plugins and workflow assembly if I click on the workflow I can now see this return manager class is present so we can now call that from within our workflows so if we now generate a new process it's going to be a workflow we'll call it create task for manager to check new account so it's triggered on the account entity it's a workflow, we'll start from a blank workflow and this will be once that loads the window it's going to be organization wide on the create of an account so then we need to define our steps so then we can call our custom so we've now got this feline soft group and return manager as an assembly we can call so that's now a step within our uh, workflow there are no properties to define because we've got no input parameters so the only thing that will come off the back of that is the output parameter for the manager ok 
Okay, so one thing I just realized we have done wrong in our code. Uh, where we retrieve the manager, this is actually the user we've retrieved and, and the manager will be a property of that, so really I should redefine that to user and then in the when we pass it out to the manager parameter we need to take the parent system user ID which is the manager field which is already an entity reference so I don't need to call that method so I'll need to redeploy that to the platform. That'll take a minute, so I'll pop this on pause. Okay, so that's now successfully deployed. So if we go back to our workflow. So after this step, we can now create a record, which will be a task for the... So we choose the type of task. we can now set the owner to be the manager that was returned from, from the uh, custom workflow assembly just to give it a subject for the required field save, activate once that's activated I can now close that if we go back to CRM so if I quickly show you that under my user account I have a manager defined as Richard so if I go and create a new account and save that there's a plugin obviously registered that we've deployed which obviously have to load so now against that account in a few seconds there should be a workflow That's now waiting for resource in progress. It's succeeded. So if we look at the workflow, we can see it ran our custom assembly, then got to the create step. If we open that task, so assigned to Richard my manager is a task to please check the details in this new account and it's got the regarding so that completes this video thank you for listening